welcome, guys. Um, like I said, appreciate you being here. Before we get started, I'll give you a brief background on my experience. So you know, why should, I, why should I listen to this guy say anything? I've been doing martial arts for about 18 years. Um, I have my Krav Maga instructor certification. So those of you who don't know, Krav Maga is the Israeli hand-to-hand -hand combat method that they've been using over there for a long time. I was a professional bodyguard for a number of years before I joined the fire service and became a firefighter EMT. And right now I am over in, I don't like to give the exact location out, but I'm in a school around here and I um, am on their amateur fight team doing mixed martial arts. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is kind of the psychology of self-defense, right? So like, Nick, you're a guy, you're a big guy. Um, I don't know if you've ever had issues with guys coming up and trying to test you, right? But yeah, I kind of figured. Usually when we get attacked or when we get accosted on the street, it's by somebody who knows what they're doing or has done it before. They've either victimized people plenty of times before or they fought, whether that's in prison, on the street, something like that. It's never the case where like somebody comes up and it's a small person that you can easily pick up and move around. Like that rarely happens. If it is a small person that comes up and accosts us, it's a small person that's been fighting all their life, right? They, they're confident in their skills and they're confident in the fact that they can victimize you, right? It's, it's a target selection that goes on. It's a psychological sizing up, right? They're casing you. You ever heard like, he's casing the joint before he robs a bank or something like that? He's casing you, he or she is casing you and they've already made up their mind that you're a soft enough target they can take advantage of you, bully you, physically, you know, dominate you, whatever that may be. So with this being said, this in mind, we have to be really diligent and cautious about taking our self-defense seriously. I don't want anyone to walk away today saying like, oh, because I know how to select soft targets on a person and, you know, do these various techniques that I can fight. Like fighting takes years and years and years to actually be good at. I I've been fighting for you know, 18 years just in the martial arts and plenty of guys can still beat me. Like I'm, I'm not invincible by any stretch of the imagination. I get beat on my amateur fight team like every week and humbled. So it's not, it's not something that I want you to think that you can take a few self-defense classes and, and whatever, right. And, and win fights. But it is the type of thing where what I'm going to show today will allow you to create an injury on somebody and hopefully egress and get away from the situation. So when I talk about creating an injury, wait, what does this mean? Like in self-defense, uh, there's a lot of BS out there on the markets. There's just, there's people who want your money. They'll let you kick some pads and hit some pads and feel good about it. And you never really actually learn how to defend yourself. We have the motto or the, should I say, we have the philosophy of creating injuries in order to get away. When I say creating injuries, I'm, I'm being like kind of hardcore about this. I want you to actually incapacitate them enough to where you are able to run away without having to worry about them pursuing you. Another thing I want you to think of is when you do run away, it's important to be situationally aware enough to know where you're going next, right? That's why I'm a big fan of when you walk into a building, look at the exits, right? Where are my exits? Is there one, you're in a restaurant. Well, is there one in the kitchen that I could use? Is there an exit sign there? Maybe when I go up to go to the bathroom, I literally just peer into the kitchen and, okay, there's a back door. If somebody did come up guns blazing or whatever it may be, I know I can take whoever I'm with and go out the back door, right? Well, once I get out the back door, where am I going from there, right? Like, we have to be diligent as well. Like, just because you were able to egress and make it out a back door, just keep in mind there might be other threats out that back door. So, right, once oh, shit, a big threat comes in this door. We all leave out this door, but we didn't realize it's a fenced-in area. Maybe we don't have the key card, right? And we're stuck here. Or maybe there's another threat right out here. So just because we leave one area of danger, when we proceed into the next area, realize there could be a threat out there as well. And I've seen people and heard stories about people who they are able to neutralize the threat. They run, and they're so panicked, they run into a wall, right? <laughs> or they they run and they get stuck in a, a situation like that. So be cautious, be diligent, keep your wits about you. When you do get into a situation like this, your adrenaline is gonna be pumping so hard. Like the heart will be going a mile a minute. You lose all of your fine motor skills. It's just all, all these fancy flashy techniques you'll see about head kicks and take the knife and throw them over your shoulder. Like that takes years to train. 
the stuff we're going to show you today relies on what we call gross motor skills. Gross motor skills are things like pushing, pulling, basic, basic hitting. And we all re will resort to our old caveman days where we just club someone over the head and go wild like that. So that's kind of the basic concepts and principles that we teach here. Uh, the name of the company, Gutter Fighting Secrets, that's what I teach. So are there, I know I'm giving you guys a lot of information at once, kind of like drinking out of a fire hose, but any, any questions so far? Okay, cool, cool. Let's get into the technique. Thirty seconds left. 